Good. All right, I'm gonna turn you off, get set up for the washer, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're at 60 degrees, almost. And if we hit vibrate, it runs its own heater without the heater on. So let's just do that. Turn it on, sorry, start cleaning. There we are. Oh, I see the inlet to the carburetor is not cooking. So I gotta play with that a little bit. That was fun. Okay, I'll get the stuff out and we'll see how it looks. Alright. Oh, look at that. That's, that's absolutely amazing, guys. It was black. Good. And even the uh, bolt, the float came out pretty good. Put this bag in here. We'll wipe it out, and then we'll rinse it with. No, oh, I've got used methyl hydrate here. You can use new. This is just an alcohol and all it does, if there's any soapy stuff in the channels of the carburetor or whatever, it just gets rid of anything that's watery and soapy. So we're going to pour it in there. We're going to use a little less than I was using with the water. We'll be a little more diligent on our use here. Twice on the jet, right? Twice on the jet. And the answer is no. Oh, that's two different songs. Oh, that came out beautiful. And the main jet. Good. Okay. I think I'm just going to put the soap. I, I want to take some water and just get the soap off this, this uh, netting here. It's not only good for my wallet, it's good for the environment. I might as well pour the whole thing in there. I don't think I filtered it last time. Well, that's interesting. Everything to me is interesting. Look at how much crud bunnies we got out of there. My curiosity is just going crazy here. We'll see if this will hold air or not. Okay, let's see if this holds more than five pounds. It's the same. So we have to work on that right now. This is where I use a tiny bit of valve cleaning compound. I don't know how much of this you can see. There's my valve cleaning, or there's my carburetor, there's my valve cleaning compound. So we're holding about four pounds of air right now, and I'm not happy with that. I'm going to cut this with a pair of side cutters. And my drill. Polish this seat. And you can also do the same thing with this needle. Pretty happy I recovered that. I'm going to do just a little bit more on this one. Clean it out with carb spray. Shoot some air in there. 
see if it, if it looks any cleaner. Yes, it is shiny now. That's cool. Now, I'm going to get a small piece of sandpaper. Put a little bit of this on here. And I'm going to just sharpen the rubber tip with sandpaper and valve grinding compound. Well, that'll be interesting to see if that helps. Okay, carb spray. And my hand wash. Now, well, let's try that again. We need the little wire on the who's it? Hello, Mrs. Pender. Hello, Mr. Pender. What's going to work? in here. I would be happy with five or six pounds. It's actually a fair amount of air pressure. Are you guys there with me? Touch that for a bit. Okay, now I'm going to put a little bit of gas in there and see if the gas gives me a higher compression level. Oops, and I don't want the gun to get gas in it, so I have to be a little bit careful here. Once again, thank you, Ken from Ken Small Engines. He he went through all the trouble of sending this mighty vac tester pump, vacuum pressure tester pump to me. And I have used it and used it and used it. Because I'm a carburetor cleaner. Okay, let's just see what we got here now. Try it. We got to do the emulsion tube. There's things you just remember about carburetors after a while, you know, like there's only stuff doesn't fit anywhere else but one place. Okay, so half, one, one and a half, two. And we're ready to mount that guy with these two screws onto the hooser. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm still not decided what I'm going to do. Uh, this is the automatic shutoff for the carburetor. I don't like these. They cause more problems than they... Uh, then they prevent. We are going to make sure it goes on this side and the super smooth side is the one with no impressions which is this plate. Now why oh why baby why baby why Okay, now we're going to grab this arm, which is our governor arm. That's the next most important. Go I know you can't see. You're going to have to just trust me. So he says, eh? Sorry, I hope I'm not boring you guys too much. That should do it. Both holes. And bada boom, bada bing. Great, now we're going to decide what we're going to do with fuel after. This hose sits up here like this.
It's goofy stuff that they do at the factory, right? Okay, that's going to work for me. Now we pop that on there like that. I'm going to use my magic machine. Drop the bolt. Hands are getting tired. Now I think I'm going to use my uh, gas feed from my tank on the wall, not the tank on the machine. Good. Alright, so let's just push this guy over here. Come and see him, my friend. Should I give this a little tweak? Stick it in there. Good. Now let's wipe up our mess. Is it, we, any, we want our mess to coincide with new messes, not old messes. There. Okay. Do you think we have... Yeah, that, that's all turned off. See, we still don't have our tank on there. Carburetor's not wet. I'm rushing things a little bit. But I want to fire it up. I'm going to pick you guys up a little bit so I don't hurt you. And we'll just change the angle of the angle a little tiny bit for you. All the switches are on. We should be able to see the choke. And it should start. It should bark and do all our stuff. And let's plug in our light. Unfortunately, this is my only method of testing right now. I've got I've got some high wattage heaters. Plug this in to make sure it actually does something. Yes, sir. Okay. What do you like? Yeah, should be good. Let's see if she goes. Oh, she's. Got a lot of power, huh? Let's wait for things to settle down. All right, well that obviously, that foam on there is no good anymore. I blew that off. I hope it didn't suck any in. I don't think so. Let's just try one more start with the air filter assembled. And then we'll put some gasoline right into the tank tomorrow. Good. Well, you know, that's pretty dang successful for our first run at it. Yeah, that foam is a pain in the neck.
Okay, so now we're going to try one more startup. Ooh, are you guys still watching this mess? And it should start. Choke's open now. No, well, needs a little choke, okay? Oh! Ooh, that's a hard pull. I just wanted to explain something. What you just saw was the, uh, the generator running great uh, off the uh, donor tank on the wall. And I never did a full function test while it was running on that, on that uh, donor tank. Uh, there's a switch right here, and it's called the idle switch. And when it's not on idle and it's running at, at full RPMs, which is around 33 to 3400 RPMs, you hit this switch. And if there's nothing running, like light bulbs or saws or whatever, uh, the, the engine's supposed to go down to idle, and then it drops significantly. You can hear it. And uh, then when somebody turns on a switch or turns on a saw, it automatically, in a few seconds, picks up RPM back to 3,400. Or 3,300 or whatever your setting is. And when I hit the switch to idle, it just surged and surged and surged wide open nothing wide wow 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 sorry I gotta use sound effects so what I found was it was running way too lean so another bad I never checked the plug until that point and the spark plug was completely grown over it wasn't even you couldn't even see the electrode and it was grown over not with carbon but with a white with that white powder that you can see on lean plugs. So anyway, I cleaned up the plug, and uh, what I did to find out uh, what was happening was number one, was this shut off was not operating, and the jet in the carburetor I think was just a bit too small. So anyway, I changed the jet. Now this jet, this is the original jet that came with the that came with the uh, generator. You can see, hope I'm not explaining too much here. There it is. And I uh, changed the jet out because the engine's a 400cc, this is a 390cc carburetor. Different setup, but the jet fit and it has a slightly larger hole allowing just a little bit more uh, gas through the carburetor 
and it runs a lot better. There you go. Long story made short. <laughs> so, thanks a lot. So it was running good on full speed, but on idle it was just surging like crazy, and I think it's been doing that either since new or since somebody changed the spark plug. I'll explain that at the end. All right, so here's our pretty little E3500 generator, flathead Honda. It just surged like crazy, even when I hooked it up to the uh, slave tank right there. And uh, so I did change, I had an old uh, 390 carb Honda 390. GSX 390, is that what it's called? And uh, I looked at the hole in that main orifice, and it was almost a third of the size as the hole that's in this carburetor. So just for experimentation purposes, I switched out the jets, and this ran a lot smoother, albeit not perfect. It still wanted to surge a little bit, so I'm just tempted now. I'm just giving you the story because I, I was working with my brother-in-law and I didn't turn on the camera. So for this intensive purposes, the carb goes on here like that. This devil goes into the bottom of the carburetor. It's a solenoid, a solenoid for gas shutoff. But it, it works kind of differently than a, than a tractor. It, uh, it uh, shuts the gas off. Uh, in, in a timed location because you don't have a battery from the key. There's no battery on this machine. It's all induced or AC over a rectifier bridge. So we won't get into that today. So now I've traced that over to here. I'm going to cut that out, punch a hole in it, and then we're going to Use this metal, which is very, very similar. Not quite, but good enough for that. Do you see where I'm holding that? Right there. And we're going to make a, a do hummer. So I don't have to use this solenoid, because I think the electronics in that solenoid is toast. Can you see my shape there? Right there. This wasn't perfect, so I just used this, this end on that edge and I just kept rotating it around and I got it pretty good as you can see it on there. Ooh, dude, I have trouble with that. Space relation they told me when I was a kid. So I'm going to just try and use my buzz cut saw here. If not, we'll use something else. Smaller piece first. All right, there's my piece. I made my piece, and I'm going to stick with it. It's fair. But all it has to do is keep that washer from falling out of there, right? So, thanks for watching me on this one. Here we go. I'm going to start this up. I'm going to show you the uh, difference between running regular and then running with the auto idle on. It should start. We'll see here. One.
RPM. That's good. Now, back. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Thanks for watching this one, guys.